Discord starting now. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because uh, what I want to be able to do here is, you know, go through the, the most important things um, when we're talking about, we're sitting here talking about real estate. So we all had best know why real estate. Um, I mean, that had better be a, a something that we can all explain to anyone at any point in time. Why are you looking at real estate? Why do you want to invest in real estate? We should know that stuff. So this is how to invest and buy real estate with a VA home loan benefit, an insider's guide that I hope will inform you on how to buy and invest in real estate, how to use the VA home loan benefit, how to buy multi-unit properties, and ultimately just how to maximize the opportunity that you have with VA eligibility. And so we're going to start off with why real estate. This is the thing you need to be able to understand. Um, your primary residence. You need to own a home as your primary residence. A lot of people consider this to be an investment, and it is. Technically, it's a hedge. Hedges are investments, but really it's a hedge. And what does that mean? Well, if we look at a, a hedge means I'm basically protecting myself against a loss. If we look here at what rents have done since the 80s, this is San Diego County specific, and this is only through 2018. This has only gone way, way higher since. So it, rents are continuing to rise. How do you stop that? How do you stop the bleeding? If you, everyone's got to live somewhere, well, when you buy a house, your payment is fixed in. You get a fixed rate, your payment's fixed in. So that's what's called a hedge. You're saying, I'm hedging my costs for my housing right here. And what's also great um, about buying is that eventually that becomes zero, right? You pay off your house and you don't have a payment anymore. So that's an important concept to understand when we're talking about why real estate, particularly with regard to your primary residence. There's also a few things that you get when you own real estate that you just simply don't get when you rent. Tax advantages, you get to write off the interest against your, your income, which is huge, especially if you're uh, active duty. You have BAH, which you're being given to tax-free. You can use that to buy a house and then write off the interest that you paid with your tax-free money against your other income that you've earned. It's a huge tax advantage um, in that scenario where it's always a tax advantage to write off your interest, but in that particular situation, it's extremely beneficial mathematically. Also, you get to pay down principal. So every month you make a payment, you're paying down into your, the equity of your home, paying down the loan and paying into the equity of your home. So you, you get that advantage when you own. And you also have the opportunity for appreciation, which we've seen huge appreciation over the last 10 years in San Diego County. And I'm gonna make a huge prediction. I'm gonna make a bold statement here, Jay. I'm going to say that in the next 10 to 15 years, we're gonna see prices in San Diego at least double, probably triple, maybe quadruple. Um, the secret's out, right? The secret is out about San Diego. And we've seen what's happened during a pandemic. We know with a low interest rate environment what's possible. We're just a better place to live than these other expensive areas like Vancouver, Los Angeles, you know, uh, Seattle, New York. Who wants to live there versus San Diego? San Diego's 10 times better. And real estate prices will eventually reflect that. So if you look at these three advantages that you get when you own, how much do you get on any one of these when you rent? Zero. You get none. You have no tax advantage. You have no principal pay down. You have no opportunity for appreciation. It is, it is a no benefit situation. So that's an important thing to understand. Um, also with investment property, listen, everybody, you know, has to pay a mortgage. You're paying someone's mortgage. When you rent, you're just paying someone else's mortgage. The ultimate leverage is when you own investment property and you have someone else paying your mortgage for you. Now, if you ask that person to come wash your car every week, they'd probably give you the middle finger, but they're paying your mortgage, which is much better for you. So it's one of these things that is out there that exists and people understand and they know that it's there. People who rent though don't realize how bad it is. Landlords, people who invest in real estate know how good it is to be on the other side of that equation. And that's why so many people do it and why it's something that we want to talk about a lot today. Um, the macro implications here is we're just focusing on why real estate in this one slide. There is an exponentially growing population. It's what we have on our hands here in the United States of America and all over the world. We only have so much land. San Diego is facing that right now. And this is one of the reasons why I predict prices will go much, much higher um, in the next 10 to 15 years is because there, we're unable to build nearly anywhere near the amount of the demand. The amount of demand for new homes in San Diego is so much greater than the amount of new homes being built. And when you have a scenario like that and you have a great place to live that's also, by the way, becoming more and more popular internationally, um, the macro implications are that when we, when we buy real estate, 
the reason that it goes higher, the reason that real estate prices go up over time, all the time, is because of that equation, supply and demand. So those are the things you need to know. I want you to know and understand that for your own peace of mind and also so that you can explain to someone else why you are investing in real estate. So let's talk about the VA home loan benefit here. I'm gonna move quickly through this. There's gonna be a lot of cool points. Um, again, I'll send you this presentation. Just send me an email at the address on the screen and I will send you a copy of this presentation so you don't have to uh, try to screenshot or take too many notes. Um, VA loan pros and con. There's only one con. So let's just get that out of the way. The VA funding fee. Okay, the VA has a funding fee. Um, if you're a first time user buying uh, a home with a VA funding fee, um, you're gonna pay 2.3%. Subsequent use is 3.6. That's if you put no money down. If you do uh, refinance, it's only half a percent. And if you have a disability of any amount, you do not pay the VA funding fee. So it's not necessarily applicable to everyone. But when it is, that's what it is. If you do pay a VA funding fee, be proud about it. It gets added to the loan. It's not something you have to pay out of pocket. Know that you are helping other veterans be able to use this program. You're helping this program to exist so that other people can use it. People might have disabilities or whatever who wouldn't have been able to afford it otherwise. This program wouldn't exist without the VA funding fee. So just know that if you do have to pay it. And <clears throat> now that the con is out of the way, let's talk about some of the crazy benefits. So you can buy 100% of the purchase price. So if you're buying a house for 500,000, you can get a loan for 500,000. You can get the VA funding fee on top of that, added to that. So it can be part of the loan. You do not have to pay it out of pocket. Also, you have lower rates. So the VA loan is essentially, uh, it's guaranteed by the government. And the, and the government guarantees 25% of it. So if you are an investor, a bank who is you know, buying VA mortgage paper, you're only on the hook for 75% of the note rate which is the reason why those bonds are bought at a very high rate and ultimately why the yields or the interest rates are lower than they are on conventional loans and other types of loans, about half a percent lower on conventional loans. And right now, even lower than that. So um, those are humongous benefits to have with the VA home loan. I'm just getting started. So <clears throat> you don't necessarily need any money to close. Um, in the past couple months, I've had multiple people, who have closed a home, bought a home with the VA home loan benefit, had excess money from seller credits and credits that were renegotiated during the process that they used to pay towards debt. So they actually bought a house and had extra money in the transaction and used it to pay down their debt, which sounds crazy. And it's harder and harder to do that now because it's so competitive, but there's not necessarily any out of pocket money needed, which is very, very rare. Um, that This is really the only loan program where that's possible um, in all of existence. So um, this is a, a humongous benefit for people who may be in a position to make a payment no problem, um, especially for active duty, but don't have you know, a bunch of money saved up um, to put down or to pay for closing costs. There's no mortgage insurance ever. <clears throat> if you don't know what this is, if you have a loan, uh, if you buy a home or you, you know, are refinancing, whatever, and you don't have 20% equity, 20%, so on an average home price, is what, what was the average home price, Jay? It was 600, something like that. I think it was six, it was crazy. Which one? Was 640. Which one? Which one? Average home price. We did oh, this right. Last month. So the median price in San Diego right now is 622. 622. Mm -hmm. So you need to have like 130 plus thousand dollars of equity, or you're going to pay this thing called mortgage insurance, which does you no good. You do not pay that with the VA home loan benefit ever, no matter what. No matter what the loan to value is, no matter if you have a VA funding fee or not, you never pay mortgage insurance. Um, qualification is also much easier. If you've tried to get a loan you know, through a bank or through some other means other than the VA home loan benefit, you'll find the VA home loan benefit is designed to help veterans buy homes. It's, it's designed is to get veterans into homes, good homes, not homes that are broken, not homes that need to be fixed up, homes that are in good shape, that are good to go, and that uh, you know, you can qualify for in a much easier manner. So for example, the VA guidelines are very, very loose. They're very liberal. And my company underwrites to the VA guideline to a T, except we have one overlay for the minimum credit score of 600. That's it. Minimum credit score of 600 outside of that, if it meets guidelines, we can do it. Um, you can also have more than one VA loan. And this is something that has come up a lot lately. Um, you can have more than one VA home loan 
which is cool. If you bought a house in Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, Washington, whatever, um, and you're like, yeah, I want to see, you know, what my assignment was, just reach out to me and I'll tell you what entitlement you have remaining. So you'll have a certain amount of entitlement remaining that will allow you to borrow with no money down. And then whenever you go above that, you just have to pay that 25% down payment difference. So can you buy multiple homes with the VA home loan benefit? 100% you absolutely can. Um, does it always make sense to do that? It may or may not. We'll have to take a look at it. But it is 100% something you can do. And I know several people who actually have three um, VA home loans out there. And one gentleman, I'm helping him refinance uh, two of those three uh, currently. So it is definitely something that can be done. So these are all things that are just totally, you know, unique to the VA home loan benefits you can't get with other programs. Um, if you do ask me about entitlement, this is the, the screenshot that I will send you. So if you say, hey, I have, I have a VA home loan already. Uh, I wanna see what my remaining entitlement is to buy another property. I will send you a screenshot that looks like this. It will show you how much entitlement you've used. It'll show you how much entitlement is available. It'll show you what your maximum 0% down price is. Um, and that will allow us to be able to figure out if it makes sense to use that given your goals. So you can get that from me pretty easily. Just email me uh, or text or call me at the number there and I can get that for you, no problem. All right, slide. So here's another thing, the magic girl. I actually put a whole slide together on this because this is an incredible benefit with the VA home loan where if you can refinance to a lower rate very, very easily. So normally, if you have a, a normal conventional loan or other type of loan, you know, you, you really need to make sure you get the absolute best rate when you get the loan because refinancing is complicated. You have to do a lot of things. You have to get an appraisal. You have to, you know, re-verify your income. You have to make sure you don't have too many debts. You know, that car you just bought, oh, now you can't refinance. Um, we don't have those problems with the VA home loan because we have what I call the magic EARL. EARL stands for interest rate reduction refinance loan. And I always say, uh, just to remember what it is, Uncle Earl, I call it Uncle Earl. Uncle Earl wants to save you money, okay? So uh, no appraisals needed, don't need an appraisal. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if the value's gone up, gone down, doesn't matter, they don't care. They just want you to get the lower rate. No income, no job required. We don't even ask for it. Don't even ask for pay stubs, don't ask anything. Doesn't matter, not required. They, they figure, hey, we're on the hook for you at you know four and a quarter. We're, we're, we're better off on the hook with you at three and a quarter, right? That's the way they look at it. So occupancy doesn't matter. You bought the house here in San Diego, you got PCS, now you're living in Texas. Um, doesn't matter, you can still refinance the loan. What's great about this is it allows you to always be able to drop the rate if the market conditions allow for it, but your rate never goes up. So you have a situation where things can only get better for you. When you get your fixed rate to begin with, um, that's basically the most that you'll pay. If rates improve, you'll get a lower payment, you'll get a lower rate. And if rates get much higher from there, it doesn't matter, you're fixed in. So it's just a humongous advantage that you have um, over any other type of loan that exists. I will say this, credit score is the key. And so I think you're gonna see moving forward in this economy as things start, are still getting felt out, Credit is going to become king. Um, cash is not gonna be king here. Credit's gonna be king. Having a good credit score is gonna be super important and it is the key to getting the best rate with the home. We can go down to 600, but 600 to 640, you're getting a lower, or you're getting a higher rate than you are above 640. Um, it's not that much higher. You're still in the low threes. It's still better than uh, other types of loans, but you can, get, you can do better with a higher credit score. So that's gonna be a big deal. Um, the only thing with the Earl, you have to wait 210 days. So that's the only limitation. Um, so the 211th day you can refinance, but if you, you know, if you get a rate today and the rates drop tomorrow, you close your home today, tomorrow rates go down, you gotta wait that 210 days. It's the only limitation with the role. All right, buying multi-units. And I wanna make sure that I'm not uh, missing out on the chat. Am I missing anything? Let me know if you see anything in the chat. And feel free at any point in time to drop stuff in the chat. I know I'm moving quick. I want to give you value. I want to respect your time. I'm watching the chat, so you're good. I'll let you know when somebody types something in. Okay, thanks, brother. Yeah. So buying multi-units, this is a big deal. We've been helping people do this. A lot of people want to do this. You should want to do this. Um, also, some cool things you can do with ADUs, granny flats, garage conversions, some really cool stuff that can be done all inside the same program. 
one to four units. We have to four units treated the same. Um, there's you know some calculations we have to do on the lending side when, it, when you get multiple units in there, um, but that's for me to worry about. You don't have to worry about that. The, the reality is that you can buy a four unit property as long as you plan to occupy, right? And the, so a lot of people ask questions about that. Like, well, what do you mean um, plan to occupy? Well, it needs to be your primary residence, right? That is a requirement. There's documents you're gonna sign when you go to close your loan. Those are gonna say this, but what does it actually say? Well, it says this, you intend to occupy this property as your primary residence. So if you intend to occupy this property as your primary residence for at least a year, um, then that's what the paperwork says. Now things could change. You may buy the, you know, this four unit, plan to move in and then get PCS and you gotta go. Or you, know, you may have a sick mom or dad and you need to move back to Maryland. Um, you know, things can come up and that's the reason why it can't really be required. They can't require you have to stay sleep in this house for a year. Um, they can't do that because life can happen and they can't hold you from back from, from doing life. So what you sign is gonna say, I intend to occupy. So a lot of people ask that question, that's why I put it in there. You can use rental income if you have landlord experience, which is something that is not defined. So a lot of the stuff within the VA guidelines is very loose. Uh, it's very gray. It's very open to interpretation. And that's why it's more, more liberal loan to, to get and easier to get than other loans. Um, because you can use rental income if you have landlord experience. What qualifies landlord experience? There is no guideline for that. So you basically just have to be able to say, hey, we, I did a paper route and had to collect money from people. Or I had a roommate who was paying me rent. Or I had several roommates and I was the the accountant who took everybody's money and paid the bills. They just want to be able to show, check off a box and say, this person has collected money from other people before. And if that's the case, then you can use the rental income, 75% of it on units that exist to qualify for more loan to buy more, a bigger property, a nicer property, more or more units. Uh, but it's, you're just capped at four units. Um, so you heard things, the loan limit, there's no loan limit. Uh, technically, this is true, uh, but the capital market is based, basically capped at 2 million, meaning that if you go above 2 million, it's a special circumstance and you have to go through a different process. Um, but essentially, you can get up to $2 million loan with all these things we've talked about, 100% financing, VA funding fee included, um, no mortgage insurance, super low interest rate, same as you can with a $500,000 house, you can with a 2 million as long as you income qualify. It's up to 2 million bucks to really do this. It's absolutely awesome. Um, also, the, uh, the VA reno renovation loan is something that is, is on its way back. I keep hearing from our CEO that it's, it's coming. We're going we're gonna to have it soon. We're going to have it soon. It's just not quite there yet, but it will be soon. The VA renovation loan is really cool. You can only do two units with this, but it's basically designed to help you be able to buy a place and fix it up a little bit. You can't add square footage. You can't add walls. You can't knock down walls, but you can update it. You can update the flooring. You can update the cabinets. You can do things like that. Um, and it's based on after repair value. So it's a cool program, something if you're interested in, email me, I'll get you more information on it. Um, and I'll put you on a list that I have of people who are waiting for that program to become available again. And you can uh, also do that on a two unit, as, as I mentioned. So let's talk about the leverage opportunity. So what if I already have uh, a VA home? What if I already have uh, you know, a, a home that I live in, I've got the VA loan on it, how do I use that? Like, how do I leverage that in some way? Well, there's 100% cash out opportunity with the VA Home Loan Benefit that doesn't exist with any other type of loan. This is completely unique to the VA Home Loan Benefit. Um, this allows you to um, do several things as I scroll too fast here. Um, so, <laughs> oh my gosh. So 100% cash out. So what that means is basically you can, I don't know what's going on here. You can borrow up to 100% of the value of your home. So if your home is worth 500,000 and you bought it for 400,000, you can now borrow up to 500,000, get the difference back in cash to basically do whatever you want with. Um, a lot of people are looking to take that money to go buy another piece of real estate. Uh, right now, I don't know what else you would do with it. If you, you could buy stocks, you can't invest in bonds, you can't get CDs, you can't put money market, they're not paying anything. So if you're going to get cash out, you're either mattress cashing it, put it in the safe, which is basically what you do when you put it in the bank, or you're, buying, you're using it to leverage and buy um, more property or diversify your investments in some other way. Um, you know, buying more property right now seems to be the thing that makes the most sense. People get real estate. It's a hard asset. Rents are really good. There's lots of reasons why you'd want to do that. But there's other things that you could do too. You could buy a second home. You can invest in a vacation rental in Big Bear or something like that. 
Um, now those things are also possible. You can do whatever you want with your cash once you get it. Consolidating debt, if you have debts, um, especially high interest rate debts that may be getting away, you know, if you chart out that debt and see that it just keeps growing, keeps becoming a greater nuisance, that could make sense to consolidate the debt. Um, hey, Derek. Yeah. You got a question in the chat. Does the qualification for a VA loan amount for a single family home, the same for a loan designed for a multi-unit property? Yeah, good question. So it's true. You, you, you do have the same qualification standards in the sense that you have to meet residual income, uh, which means we have to we have to count some different things when you're doing a multi-unit. We have to count the total square footage. We have to look at the um, the overall costs of it. And residual income is basically just it's it's the net. What do you net whenever you know from your paycheck? Let's say you make five thousand a month, but you really only get you know thirty eight hundred net. We look at that net, and then we look at your bills. And there has to be a certain amount left over um, at the end of the month. So you do have to meet the same qualifications. It still has to appraise. You basically go through the same process. Um, it can just be a little more difficult to qualify because they're usually higher prices. Um, and if you don't have a renter in there, then you have to qualify for it all on your own. Or if you can't prove your landlord experience, then you have to qualify for it all on your own. Um, outside of that, though, there's, there's no difference. If you're eligible and you can income qualify for the amount of the purchase price, you are good to go. Great question, though. So with the 100% cash out, the way that it works with VA, if you go above 90% on your cash out, you have to take a higher rate, slightly higher rate, could be a quarter percent, three eighths of a percent. <clears throat> You're still below market rate for other types of loans. But the good news is you can call Uncle Earl 210 days later and you can get the lower rate, um, or whatever the market rate is at that period of time. So that's the kind of the, the, the saving grace on the take, having to take a higher rate if you do this. There is no other program that like this that exists. Um, there's nothing, nothing even close. Right now, cash outs are even hard to get at 80 or 75% loan to value with conventional loans. The rates are through the roof, the interest rate adjustments are crazy, um, underwriting is super scrutinistic. You can get 100% cash out VA loan because it's guideline. The VA isn't going anywhere. You know, the, this program has been around for decades. It's not changing. The only thing that changes is the overlays that the banks have on it for their own individualized reasons. And a lot of that is based on they have to stay within certain percentage thresholds for defaults and different things. And if they get out of whack, they may have to make an adjustment. Um, if you're a big enough bank like we are, you don't have that issue and you don't have any of those overlays. So you get to utilize the full benefit of the guidelines of the VA home loan. It's just super, super cool. Okay, let's get to some reminders here so we can move on. Biggest, biggest reminder, why real estate? Principal pay down, appreciation, tax advantage. I want you to memorize those things. Those are the reasons why real estate. If you're not, if you don't own, you don't get any of those. You get exactly zero for each one of those. Uh, there's no better home loan available to buy real estate with than the VA home loan benefit. I'll debate anyone that anywhere, anytime, any day. Dave Ramsey, you name it, bring it on. Uh, I'll debate that and easily win that debate. This is something that we're going to talk about here uh, further as we get uh, talking with Jay have an interest strategy and an exit strategy. Always, you know, you always want to know what your interest strategy is, what your exit strategy is when you buy real estate. Um, sometimes that could be as simple as just making sure you have a little rental survey or you know what it could rent for. Um, in case you get PCS, you have to go somewhere else. You're able to go ahead and rent the home and cover the payment. Or at least if, if not, then you know ahead of time, okay, well, I'm going to be short hundred bucks or whatever it may be. Um, have a strategy. Know that when you're getting into it. A um, couple of things really quick. I'm just going to punch through this uh, for my company. A lot of people ask these questions. You know, how do I know where to go uh, to get the best deal? We have extremely low rates. I'm in competition with the credit unions all day long. I have not lost a loan to a credit union um, ever uh, just because our rates are so low. Very similar to the credit unions, we don't charge any fees. Uh, 600 minimum FICO, you won't see that with any of these big other big VA lenders. Most of them are at 640 or 660. Um, we don't charge any lender fees, zero. So you don't get an admin fee, you don't get an underwriting fee, you don't get um, any junk fees. It's all crap. Um, you shouldn't have to pay any of that and we don't charge any of those. Uh, we are client focused. The reason I work at Line Mortgage is because I've never seen a company that cares as much about the client as I do before. Most companies you have to, as a loan officer, you have to battle, you know, say, hey, think about my client here. You know, think about what they're going through. My company gets that. 
in a major, major way. And it's really, really cool to see what we will do to make a client happy. Really awesome. Um, I'm available seven days a week, so it's easy to reach me. I think a lot of people appreciate that. Um, if you have questions, if you want to get started with an application, whatever, just go to DerekEvans.com. Um, my contact information, oh, if you do that, this is what you'll see. Um, so when you see that, you know you're in the right place. My contact information, if you have any questions, call, text, email me anytime. Happy to help. Love answering questions. It's never a bother. You are never a bother to me. I am here. This is my passion. This is what I love. I want to make sure that you are in the best possible position to succeed for you and your family. Um, all right. Any other rips in the chat, Jay? Nope. <laughs> all right. Well, there he is. Cue the Rocky music. Um, oh, Jay man. Lee, my man, I'm going to stop sharing so that you can take over and drop some major knowledge for us. I'll keep all right. It. Cool, man. Cool. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you all for showing up. Um, you know, we, we do this, you know, on a monthly basis just to give back. So it's, you know, there's there's no opt-in, there's no buy-in. This is just free information that we feel that is not given correctly um, by the military or the VA or a bunch of the other real estate agents or real or, or loan officers out there. Um, so what I'm going to cover today is a little bit different than what you're going to get from most VA seminars right? Most people go in and they talk about just the stuff that Derek just talked about and say, okay, now great. Let's go to the back and get you pre-qualified and get you a house. Um, I'm going to talk about the whole other avenue of the VA and how you can use uh, the VA benefit to acquire generational wealth. Um, so a little background on, on me. I served 20 years. For those of you that don't know me, um, I uh, retired from the Navy back in 2018 mm -hmm. And I did so uh, owning multiple houses. Um, and how I was able to do that was at, you know, each duty station, you know, when we transferred out, we would buy a house. Um, and then we sold the rentals to purchase, you know, my wife's dream home, which is now no longer her dream home. And she wants another dream home. Um, so, <laughs> um, you know, it just keeps getting bigger. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but basically what I'm going to show you is, you know, how you can take your benefit, whether you're still in the service or if you're out of the service and use that benefit to acquire wealth. Now, the key is this. Everybody says, well, you know, hey, let me wait until the prices drop. What if they never do? That's a question you have to ask yourself. They've been telling us since 2018, 2017, that prices were going to drop here in San Diego. And all we've seen is an increase after increase, after increase, after increase. I can tell you right now, um, you know, the agents that are on my team, they witnessed it today. I got an offer on a third of a house that uh, is a one bedroom, one bath, needs a complete remodel. Um, it's 480 square feet. And I got it for $60,000 over list price. So just to, Think about that for a minute. This home is costing someone $480,000. That means they're paying $1,000 per square foot. You don't see that unless you go to La Jolla on the beach. And this is in North Park. So anyone that's saying that the housing prices are going to crash, we're going to have another recession, there's no evidence of that. Um, the best time to buy real estate was 20 years ago. The next best time is today. Right. So if you don't own and you have your, your benefit available, use it. And this is what you want to do. So the first one, it doesn't have to be your dream home, right? You have to realize that the dream home doesn't even really exist. For instance, myself, we bought the big house with, you know, the bedrooms and redid the kitchen and all that stuff. And now she wants more entertaining space. So what I thought would be our last home, is not going to be our last home. It's going to be a home for two or three years as we continue to upgrade it and add on to it and make the value go up. Um, we bought ours in 2017 for 613,000. Our neighbor four houses down just listed their house for 970. So, you know, uh, it's our neighborhood is just skyrocketing. So buy when you can. Otherwise, you're wasting your money. So think about this for a minute. Like Derek was talking about with the rentals, right? When you're renting a place and you're renting an apartment, when you're renting, you know, Navy housing, that money that the military gives you, or if you're out of the military and you're, you know, you're working a job, that money that you're earning, you're basically giving to someone else to pay their mortgage off. 
instead of doing that, pay your own mortgage. Now, here's how you do it. When you go use your VA, you got you know a zero down loan, right? All you need is your closing costs. And sometimes depending on the market and, and the atmosphere at that time, you can get that negotiated into contract. If it's a strong seller's market, you probably have to have some cash on hand. Um, depending on the purchase price of the home, like here in San Diego, it's about 2% is roughly what your closing costs are. Um, so in different areas of the country, it's going to be different because taxes are different. Um, now, after you live in that home for a few years, you refi, you cash out, and you go buy another one, right? You upgrade. Now rent that one out. Now, if, if you're still active duty, every duty station you go to, you should be buying a property, every single one. Well, I don't want to live in Virginia. I don't want to live in Colorado. I don't want to live in Washington State. I don't want to live in Florida. I got it. It doesn't matter because wherever there's military, there's going to be renters. And wherever there's renters, that's income for you. So this is kind of how you want to structure it. How do I get the, the whiteboard thing there? Uh, Derek, can you put that thing up for me again like you did last time? Was it me? I, I think you just do share screen. And then it'll give you the option. Third option over will be whiteboard. Uh, you got to allow me to share it. Oh, really? Yep. Because you're the host. Just can share time simultaneously. Advanced sharing option. Um, I think you should be able to. They're not allowing it. No nope. host disabled attendee sharing. So just make me the host, then it'll let me. You are now the host. Oh, I have the power. <laughs> All right. So advanced. Okay. No, that's not it. So let's do a share screen and here we go, whiteboard. All right, so can everybody see the whiteboard? Yes, no, nod your heads. Cool, all right. Okay, so let me move this out the way. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna want, and I'm gonna, now I'm drawing with a mouse, so this isn't as pretty as a Sharpie on a, a whiteboard. All right, don't laugh at me, I, I see some smiles. All right, so this is your umbrella, right? This is your top layer. This is your trust. All right, your next layer is your S Corp. Now below that, you wanna have another layer. Now these are your LLCs. So now you have a corporate veil three thick, all right? And as you're looking at this, the LLCs are gonna be your individual houses. So I wish there was an emoji for a house, but I'm just gonna do, let's see. Oh, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. So these are houses, okay? There's no roofs, no doors, no windows, but they count. Cool, all right. So those are different houses. Now, let's pretend um, this one right here, has can I move this? Yeah, this one has 10k equity, right? That's this little one right there. Oop. Okay, I'll draw this. That one. Now this one is gonna have much more. Let's say 100k. right? And so on and so forth down the line. And let's just pretend this one has 1,000, like because you just bought it and you used your VA loan and you barely got it below market. Um, and this one is a couple years old, so you have 20K, right? And so on down the line. So the ones you want to separate are the ones with a good amount of equity. So if this one over here had 5K, that one, you could loop these two together into one LLC, all right? These other ones, you're gonna want an individual LLCs. And the reason being is if you have a tenant in one of these properties 
and they come in and trip, fall, break a leg. Equity of your uh, microphone has changed to internal. Uh oh, hold on. Let's see. Can you guys still hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you want to protect those assets, right? That's the big thing. Now here's the cool thing. Let me close this off. All right. Because of where's the eraser? There we go. Because you're set up this way, each LLC is its own entity. So if you're being sued for the equity in your property and only has a thousand dollars, you can just write them a check for a thousand dollars. If they're hitting you for twenty grand, you're not getting hurt on the other properties, right? It's the only that one property because they can't sue you for more than the equity of the home. Now, here's the really cool part. All right, passive income, right? Passive income in the United States is taxed at a lower tax bracket than a regular job. So it's taxed at 15.3%. Everybody see that? And because you're part of an S Corp, you have what's called distributions, right? So S Corp does distributions to shareholders. And this, <laughs> This is where it gets awesome. So because you're the sole shareholder of your S Corp and you have no other shareholders, the distributions come directly to you. Now, let's just do something real easy. Now, this is just for math purposes. Everyone's gonna make 100 grand a year off a of rental income off the jump, all right? So $100,000 income, right? The IRS is gonna expect you to pay yourself a reasonable wage, which is roughly 30% right? So that's $30,000, right? So $30,000, someone break out a calculator and give me 15.3% of 30,000. Everybody do the math? Yeah, cool. All right. You want, you want the answer? I know what the answer is. I want to see if I can get it. I've been in the chat. Let's fire this chat up. Let's get Let's this go. going. Let's see what the Who's chat is. Who's the winner? We got a giveaway Starbucks gift card. I can't see the uh, I can't see the chat. Can you see it? Jamal, you win. Forty five ninety. There you go. Out of boy. So forty five ninety in taxes. Now let's subtract forty five ninety from eight thousand. That equals twenty four oh twenty five four ten. Right? So you just made two thousand twenty thousand five hundred or twenty-five thousand four hundred and ten dollars. And you're taxed at 15.3%. But here's the kicker. Where is the other 70 grand? The other 70 grand is being sent out to shareholders in what's called a distribution. So the distribution does not have a FICA tax on it which is an income tax for the business. So if, if you're a business owner, you'll know that when you pay an employee, the business pay, pays taxes as well as the employee. So every time you do that, you get, you get double-ended, you get hit with taxes twice. So like myself with my business, I W2 myself, I, I pay myself. So every time I pay myself, I get taxed and my business gets taxed. So pretend I'm paying myself a thousand dollars. I'm really only gonna take home like 800 bucks, right? 750, 800 but my business paid out like 1300, right? So I'm taking two losses there. Well, on this, you don't have that. That S Corp does not have a FICA tax on a distribution. So you yourself only get taxed on the income. The business does not. So it saves you a ton of money. So now you just been paid uh, $95,410 out of $100,000 and only paid $4,590 in taxes. How does that sound? Right? That's that's the big money right there. That's the stuff that all these multimillionaires and investors don't want you to know because once you know this, once the public knows how to do this, they're going to have to rewrite the tax code because right now they're taking advantage of it. The rich stay rich and the poor stay poor and the middle class just keep getting poorer and poorer. We're trying to change that. We're trying to start with you, the military. Um, so these numbers, I hope they make sense. If you have questions, please ask. But that's what you need to do when you start buying and holding properties. 
everybody wants to be a flipper because they make TV shows about it, but they don't talk about those guys out there. Like my mentor, Chuck Trinas out in, out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, who has 750 rentals, 750 rentals. Do you know how much money that is every month, every year? He's just sitting on it. Doesn't do anything. Just kind of hangs out and buys real estate and rents it out. Doesn't flip them. So you can do that, but I wouldn't. Now, uh, one of the things I do want to cover for, for veterans and, and active duty real quick is a couple things that they're going to get when they get out of the Navy or Marine Corps, Air Force, Army. Um, I, think the, I think the Coast Guard can get this stuff. I'm not sure. Um, so for one, when you go in to get your disability rating and you get your disability, you know, when they do your movement checks, you got to make sure you let them know when it hurts. Don't try to muscle through it. Don't try to be extra strong. Oh, I can totally move my arm. And when it doesn't hurt, because they're going to ask you, stop when it hurts. So that first one, you, you get that pinch, stop. Now, if you get 100% disability, if you get 100% disability, there is another uh, income that you can get called aid in attendance. All right, aid and attendance. It's up to $2,500 for your spouse or significant other or some adult in your home to take care of you and help you with your daily living activities. Prepping food, bathing, all that good stuff. You have to have at least two items that you cannot do that are cheap that they'll ask you about. So that's another 2500 bucks. So let me put it to you like this. Um, an E6 retired, 100% disability is going to get around uh, almost $5,000 a month, right? Now, if you can take an extra 2500 a month, now you're making 7500 Now, if you have the aid and attendance, you're now a shoe-in as long as you've been unemployed for two years for SSDI, which is Social Security Disability Income, which is another $2,600. How much money is that? Yeah, it's 10 grand. 10 grand a month to do absolutely nothing. Yeah, you sacrificed your body for the country. I get it. It sucks. Um, but at the same time, most people don't know about these other pays that can really affect your opportunity to purchase real estate and invest in your future. Because if you could collect $10,000 a month and just, you know, live within your means and from there invest that money back into real estate, into your S corps, into your LLCs and purchase more and more properties from there, you're going to be good to go. Like you can legit, if you retire from the military, let's say you start young, um, you've only been in the military two, three years. You buy your first house. Let's say you do 20 years. You have 17 years left. You should be buying a property every three or four years every time you PCS. You can legit leave the military with five or six houses. Now, in doing so, five or six houses, they're not going to make you a ton of money right away. But once you retire, you've got 20 years in on one of them. 20 years, you know, let's just say. Let's say you did 23. You got 20 years on that one. Let's say you didn't do 23 years. Let's say you did 20, you have 17 years. It's over 50% paid off. What can you do? Cash out, go buy another property, right? And get income off that property. Now there's places in the country right now where you can buy real estate for stupid cheap. And they rent for way more than you can get anywhere else. Uh, because just the weird ratios that they have where they are, um, you know, the Carolinas, Texas, Florida, like you can get stuff out there cheap and they'll rent for way more than the mortgage. Um, I'm talking anywhere from $500 to $1,000 a month profit. So out here in San Diego, you just spend five, 600 grand to make $200 in profit. <laughs> so it just depends, right? But if you're doing it right, if you're doing it every time you transfer, that couple hundred bucks adds up. Next thing you know, you have two houses. Now they're making you, you know, four to $600. And then you keep doing that every year that house is climbing in value. Like I said, we bought ours at 613. Our neighbor just listed at 970. Now our house isn't as big as his, but I know I could get at least 750 to 800,000 for my property. That's almost, that's a $200,000 gain, right? If I can get 800,000, that just tells you right there, that's crazy in three years. So if you're buying in San Diego, that's the move, period. Now, if you can't afford a $500,000, $600,000 house, that's fine. Get you a $300,000 one-bedroom, one-bath condo. It will appreciate. In 2018, condos in Bonita increased 49%. 49% one year. So 
if I would have bought then, I could have bought a couple of them because they were they were low two hundreds. The next year they were over what, what I would have said I went at three three eighty three three eighty seven something like that, and it was a turd, man. It needed a lot of work. So I hope that helps get you in the right mindset of you can take these this opportunity to use your benefit and later down the line as you acquire more properties as you cash out refi and use that money to buy more property you're going to increase your income and your net worth the goal is right to get a minimum of what you were getting while you were in service or at your job after service to replace that income with real estate investments and then that way you can legit sit back and retire and just go okay i'm just going to keep doing this instead of going to work, spending my time at a nine to five. So um, let me clear this. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, hold on. Uh, okay. Can open it up? Yeah, let's open it up. Anybody, let's, let's unmute them. Should I just unmute everybody? <laughs> yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Oh, we got a couple people uh, that didn't make it into the Linda Lee trying to get in. She's late, so we'll get her on the next one. Um, you know, so who has questions? I know y'all got questions. Um, you know, I did this and I, I made a lot of money doing it. Um, you know, uh, I was at one command actually with Jamal and they investigated me for my income while I was in the Navy. It was stupid. <laughs> it's because I bought a three a C class Mercedes. I bought a C class Mercedes, and they investigated my income. They had NCIS run my check. I was like, "Are you kidding me, man?" It'd be one thing if it was a Ferrari, but like a forty thousand dollar car. Are you guys stupid? Like this is dumb. That's funny. Uh, yeah, man. So, yeah. um, so how about this? Who here watching right now already owns a property? Go ahead and raise your hands, and I'll scroll through the, I'll scroll through. Not everybody showing their faces. They're scared. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, you just kind of showed, you know, why Trump doesn't want to show his tax returns, right? Like, there's certain I things would. in the t tax. Yeah, I mean, you don't want people to see that. Um, it's a huge tax advantage. It's set up there. It's the law. It's something you can do. This isn't like a, an underground meeting that we're having about how you can break the law without anyone knowing. This is the rules that have been set in place. You can take advantage of these. You can do this. You can execute this. Um, it's completely and totally right there. I mean, it may seem far away, but it is right in front of you. Um, and I think, you know, something else too, Jay, while people are lighting up, uh, type your, uh, uh, type your questions in Richard. I see your question. Uh, does VA loan qualify for other countries? No, it doesn't. Um, uh, but in the United States, um, you can hundred percent use it. And we actually have an office in Hawaii, um, as well. Um, you can use the VA home loan benefit there. But you know, can it be used on U.S. territories? Yeah, yeah, like Guam, Puerto Rico. Yep, as long as you have, uh, you know, a uh, I don't know what the technical term is, but the answer is yes. So okay. you, uh, you know, what's and what's cool about this too, and, and you know, we're talking about accumulating properties that they may seem so far away. Like if you don't have one yet, and like, man, how am I going to get to 10 or, or 20? I don't even have one. I don't even know if I can get one. Um, you always got to start with one, the first step, right? And, you know, sometimes we have situations we're working with people right now where Jay and I are talking to them and they did, they did great. You know, they bought a house three or four years ago. They've got hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity. And sometimes that first one, is the is the the first domino you go and you get the first one and a few years later all of a sudden you have all this equity now you can sell that one take that equity go reutilize your VA home loan benefit to get a no down loan to buy one property and then take the equity to go buy another property um, or you can keep that one and, and just make it a rental and go buy another one and now you have two as well but there's different ways you know, once you have the first one you get different leverage opportunities pop up different spots where you, you have options. You know, you can say, well, if the market's doing really well, maybe I will sell and then buy this type and then take the cash and go do this. You just start to have more, more, more options on what you can do and how you can move your assets around. So it really is about getting that first one. You know, although the goal may be more, get a, get a good first one and then you can take it from there. Yeah, 100% what Derek just said. Um, you know, like, like we have, we have a client that we just closed on, uh, April 
um, young guy about to get out of the military and he bought himself a two unit property, had two houses on it. Both had one had a three bedroom and one was a four bedroom and he got it for 800 grand. So he's going to rent out one entire house to like a family. And then he's renting out rooms in his house that he's going to live in to all his buddies. Now he's going to live in that property and get paid to live there. Right. Like it's crazy. Um, but he was able to do that. So like the $800,000 mortgage doesn't even matter at that point. Cause he's getting paid to live there. He doesn't have any money going into the house himself. It's crazy. It's nuts. No, man. You know, so, you know, th those kind of options where you can take a property and then sell one, take the equity and put it in the bank and then go use your VA again and get a comparable home, the one you just had, but then now you have a hundred, 200 grand equity, go use that and buy you an investment property and keep it pushing two, three years, do it again. And then again, and then again, and then again, rinse and repeat. Um, it's, it's a longer conversation to go into, um, to help show somebody how to do that in detail. Um, but we don't mind sharing. That's, that's why we're here. Uh, it's the, the biggest thing is, you know, when I served and, you know, when Jamal was there serving with us, uh, they never taught us anything about how to survive after the military, except for get in with the contractors and get a good con contractor job or go work with the government and do the same thing. Right. That, that, that was what they taught us. They never taught us how to go make money on our own, go how to use our benefits to where we could survive without them. They wanted us reliant on what they had. And, you know, I'll never say nothing bad about joining the military. It was great for me. Yeah, there's good commands and bad commands, but I wouldn't be at where I am today without what I experienced for those 20 years. And I think anyone who served can agree that, yeah, there's some times where it sucks and there's going to be times where it's great. But along the way, you're going to find the experiences and the benefits will really benefit you long term to where it's a stepping stone in life. You know what I mean? Whether you do four years or 20 years or 30 years, it's a stepping stone in your life to where you can use that benefit now and do whatever you want with it and start learning how to make that make you more money. Something else too, uh, I forgot to mention earlier was you were talking about if you have 100% disability, you can get 20% off of your real estate taxes here in San Diego County. So um, once you buy your property and you have it, um, then you can apply for that. And I have all the paperwork um, for that as well. If you want to email me, I can get that to you if you're in that scenario. Um, I usually don't tell people that until um, you know, they get a little bit closer to the end of purchasing a home. It's a nice cherry on top. You know, it's a nice surprise. You don't get it right away. You know, you don't get it when you initially get your docs. You have to, you know, apply for it and get it afterward. But um, it is a, is, is a nice thing to know. Um, also, when we talk about in that same scenario where you get your first one, all of a sudden you have equity, what do I do? Well, you, we have the 100% cash out option, right? Which is also something to think about, especially right now we've got Kelani, who's a Marine veteran, who is ADU geek, um, adugeeks.com. <clears throat> you can do garage conversions. You can add prefab ADUs to a property. Um, he was telling us, you know, low six figures. I mean, for, for some of these people who have $150,000, $250,000 in equity, it'd be no problem to convert a garage and add a 2-1 ADU if you have the right property. So I think a good strategy for a lot of people right now is to look to get into that single family, a house that maybe has a detached garage or has a, just a nice setup for an attached garage or maybe a nice piece of, of land where you could add an ADU to it. Let the equity grow. Remember, time is all you need with real estate. You don't need to be savvy. You don't need to figure anything out. You don't have to be some genius at running numbers on how to, you know, do renovations and do all that stuff that you see on TV. All you need is time. All you need is time. In the time, in the game. Uh, we were learning to ride dirt bikes as little kids. We called it seat time. You just need more seat time. Once he gets more seat time, he won't fall so much. He won't keep crashing and hurting himself. You need seat time. With real estate, you just need time. That's it. Just time in. And if you have a good strategy around that, you can use that equity for multiple things, whether it's buying other properties or improving your current property. But I can tell you right now, those multi-unit properties are hot as a firecracker. I mean, if you were selling a two or three unit property right now, you would get destroyed with offers, no matter what the price point. Yeah. Hey, this is, oh, I know Aleem has a question, but I have a question after Aleem. Yeah. Aleem, uh, what if you don't have a credit score? Um, I've only met one person that had perfect credit um everyone else uh doesn't have perfect and we have the ability to hook you up with somebody who can get you a nice boost pretty quickly 
Um, our credit repair guy is legit. He actually did mine. Um, so I can vouch for him. Um, so it's, it's not hard to do. Uh, we use trade lines and dispute letters and stuff like that to help you, you know, boost your score. Um, the biggest thing that will hurt you the most is late payments that are recent. So if you're caught up on your payments, you just have a low score, you have zero credit or, you know, old credit. Um, you know, we had one recently, uh, the guy needed to sell his house, but to buy another house, he needed to boost his credit about, what was it, Derek, about a month? Less. Less than a month? Yeah. yeah it's like three weeks. And, and how many points did he jump up? Uh, well, in that, in that case, the guy actually went from having no score to having like a 686 in just a few weeks. So yeah. that shouldn't really be possible, you know, right? Like you're supposed to have six months of credit history and all that stuff. But we've got, there's, there's certain things, if you understand the credit scoring algorithm, if you understand how that game is played, which our credit repair guy definitely does, um, he can tell you exactly what to do. You do some stuff and boom, all of a sudden you have these positive items that are working for you immediately. So there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do. You only need a 600 credit score too, you know, um, to qualify for the VA home loan benefit, which um, the average credit score is about six, uh, 686, 687. Um, that's the, the average credit score, sorry, 678. And um, so, you know, if you're, even if you're down the low 600s or, or fi high fives, you know, there's not, you're not far away. You're not far away from being eligible. So definitely don't let that discourage you. And if nothing else, um, you know, get that fixed for other reasons. You know, um, we can help you get a good credit report so that you can see what that really looks like. I can give you advice on that. I've been a credit uh, expert for 21 plus years, certified. Um, and so, you know, that's something we can definitely help with. Don't let that detract you for sure. Let's hear it, Jamal. All right, so I got a question. So if you're, if you never bought a home before, right, would you suggest buying your first home or your first rental property? And then if you decide to go with the rental property, uh, do you recommend staying local of where you're currently at? So I'm currently in Lafayette, Louisiana. So would you suggest, you know, um, buying real estate in where you at or would you suggest in, in a in a in a city that has more like Houston in Texas or in a, any other state you want to handle that one you want me to take it go ahead Jay and I'll follow up all right um so it's really your situation and what you're paying for where you're at right um if you're gonna be able to purchase a home not where you are uh you can't really use the VA home loan because you didn't you live in the property um, so they're not going to give you a home loan on a property in Houston if you're living in Lafayette, Louisiana, right? So you'd have to go conventional with that. So you're going to need money down. Um, now, by all means, if you can do it, cool. Um, but if it, if it fails, um, you know, now you're stuck with a property that you can't rent out and that you can't look at. Um, so I would say if you've never bought a home before, buy your first home, live in it, figure out what happens what it takes to be a homeowner. Cause it's not the same thing as just when you rent a house and something breaks or you need landscaping or, you know, the, it's not like an apartment where they have people to keep up the grounds. You got to do it yourself. So knowing what it takes to maintain the property um, and you know, what things look like when they go bad is really going to help you be a good landlord. When you have rental properties, it'll help you understand more. So if you do hire a property manager, they won't be able to take advantage of you. Like a lot of places will. Um, so it just really depends on your financial situation and what you're doing. Uh, it, if, if I was a younger guy and I didn't own a house yet, I would legit buy Plex. I would rent out one side and live in the other side and have whoever's paying on the other side, pay three quarters of my mortgage. That's yeah. what I would do. And that's, that's really the play pretty much everywhere in the country besides San Diego, right? It's really hard to find a duplex here. Like, um, you know, or let's say more difficult than if, like where I'm from in Missouri, where there's duplexes everywhere. Everybody bought duplexes. All my buddies own like 15 duplexes, you know, because they're a hundred grand. Um, and so, you know, it's, it, that, it can be a little bit more difficult, but my opinion on that one, Jamal, um, is everyone should buy their primary residence first, kind of the, the, at the top of the, the show, if you will, we talked about hedge, right? Like hedging your personal expenses, um, you know, in real estate that your house payment, housing payment is going to be your biggest expense. You want to hedge that. You want to have some control over that. Also tax advantages um, don't just apply to uh, deduction of mortgage interest. Something that I've neglected to say earlier, which I apologize for is that if you um, have appreciation 
um, on your property and you've lived in the, the property for at least two of the last five years, <clears throat> okay, then you don't have to pay any capital gains tax up to half a million dollars. Um, so actually just changed. Is it more now? It's five of the last five years. You have to live in five of the last five years? Yep. Are you sure? Yep. I'm going to have to check on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's changed. But the big thing is you have to have more than $250,000 of equity uh, as a solo person or $500,000 in equity as a uh, married couple. So not very many people are going to buy a house and have 500 grand in equity in three years. <laughs> right. It's just not going to happen. And then you can always do a 1031 exchange. So there's ways to bypass the taxes. Again, 1031 exchange is a whole other lesson. Um, you know, but it, this is, this is the basics. We're giving you the tools to get started. The 1031 is a much more advanced level uh, investing tool, uh, tax code. Um, but basically what it is, is you're deferring your tax payment from one property to purchase another property um, that's equal, equal or greater value. Um, so yeah, you, you can do that. Hey Jay, I don't know if you can see the waiting room or not, but there might be someone in there. Um, There's, yeah, I see a Julie Daniels. I think she was here earlier. Okay. Yeah. She says she's trying to get back in. Um, so <clears throat> I'll let her in. So let's say, okay. So, so let's say it's five out of the last five years. Um, so at least Welcome if, back, Julie. <laughs> what's up, Julie? So um, if you essentially what's cool about this, okay, let's say it's five out of the last five years um, is you go to sell this property and then you don't have to pay tax on the gain up to that certain amount. Right? So you get that money tax free, which is a huge advantage. Um, so that's something to weigh as to whether or not like, Hey, is my strategy that I'm buying a place that I plan on renting later? Sometimes that is the right thing to do. You buy a condo first, say, okay, Hey, we don't have any kids. We don't need the space. We want to get a good location. We're lock in a good location. Jay was talking about how the condos in his area have doubled in the last few years. Yeah. I mean like that, that happens to buy good location. If you have a circumstantial advantage, like, Hey, we don't have any kids. We don't really care about school districts. Okay, great. Find an area where, you know, you see investment in the schools you know, in these little cities and municipalities and these different areas, they, they have this stuff playing out 10, 15 years in advance. You can find out, you can do the research, you can see, are they pouring money into the schools here? Cool, buy a place there. Um, you know, because you know values will go up as the schools get better. Uh, follow the uh, orange cones is what we were always told when I was uh, early in the game. If you see construction happening in an area that happened on, uh, what's that, San Vicente Road in Ramona, saw the construction like seven, eight years ago, and then what happened? If you followed those orange cones, if you bought in that area, if you bought in the estates or whatever, <sighs> values went up. So, um, you know, it's, there's certain things you can do if you have a circumstantial advantage for patients, for time, for not needing certain things um, where you can take advantage of those. But I think buying your primary residence first, being able to take advantage of tax advantages during, and then after when you sell it with the equity to get that money without having to pay tax on it, or to roll it if you do. Let's say you have a huge gain after three years, you're not there five of the last five. Okay, then you roll it, do a 1031 and roll it into something bigger. But you just, you have to be in the game to accumulate this stuff um, and to have an, to have an option, you know? Um, and and we, someone asked, I think, or maybe we just said earlier about, well, I don't wanna buy now, I think prices are too high, or I think prices will go lower. Um, the hard part about that equation is, what do you do if you wait a year and prices are higher? Do you then say, well, now I really have to wait because like I'm way off from where I wanted to be in. And then what do you do after that year when prices go higher? Because this is what's happened in the last 10 years. I literally know people who've been saying this for 10 years. <laughs> They've never been able to get in. They watched real estate values in San Diego double, almost triple. They never got in because they were waiting for that pullback that made them feel good about, you know, the price they were getting. So I just, my, my challenge would be, my question would be, what do you do if you're wrong? And if you don't have a good option for that, then you're really all in on one thing, which is you're counting on prices to go down, which is unlikely. We don't see that happen very often. So you don't want to put all your eggs in a basket um, that usually gets crushed. That doesn't make any sense. So um, those are just some of the sort of like macro logical things that I think we should really think about when we're looking to invest in things. And when we're trying to figure out what makes sense, um, one of the real estates we're winning, I think right now, um, in real estate isn't just interest rates. It's, it's simple. It's just simply demand. Like people don't want to vacate San Diego at the rate that people want to be here. And people are really laying down roots. Like I think something that people have realized in the last few years is that like, this is a gem. This place is a gem. 
I mean, I've traveled all over the world. Um, I've been everywhere and I always look at real estate and I'm always like, what? Like I was in Minnesota. I don't know if I told you this yet. I was in Minnesota. I was walking down this, this street in this neighborhood near my hotel house. I'm looking at houses on Zillow, like 630,000. I was like, what? In Minnesota? In Minnesota? I lost a little Minnesota. Are you kidding me? For 630, <laughs> which you can buy, I, you live in San Diego for that. Like why, why would you want to live in Minnesota? So like secrets out, man. It's, it's, you know, real estate's always going to go up. It will over long periods of time. It will, there will be certain times when it goes down. We've, we've seen that happen. Um, but the reality is over time it goes up. So you don't need to be a genius. You just have to can, be in the game. Can I do one more follow-up question on that? Please. So my plan is, so in the next two to three years, we're choosing between Houston and San Diego or San Diego. Right. Okay. Um, so right now I'm looking to purchase my first home. Right or rental property in a sense, but in two years, I plan to choose between Houston or San Diego. So if I do get that property, am I losing money out of that in the, in the two years? How, how would you lose money on it? That's the question. That could be, yeah, because you're paying down on the house and then when you sell it, if you sell it or renting out. Um, okay, that makes sense, okay. Yeah, you're good. Uh, so hold on, I'm gonna butcher your name, brother. I don't or or ma'am. I'm not sure. A, a, a limb. Um, so it says, what about townhomes? Is our first home? It seems like it's the only thing we can afford in SD. Can the equity go up on townhomes? Definitely, 100. It's going up. Um, we we're actually gonna be doing another show Friday um, on market statistics, and we do this show every month. Uh, me and Derek, where I pull up the stats on price point for price point, you know, between 300,000 and 400,000, 401 to 500 and so on and so forth, all the way up on, you know, detail, you know, attached homes, which are condos and townhouses, as well as detached homes or single families. Um, we've seen a huge increase um, in the value in townhomes and condos. They actually sell for much higher per square foot than single family homes do. Reason being is because they are generally more affordable. Uh, they are they are building more and more condos and townhomes as we speak. Um, I don't know if you know this, but up in Carmel Valley, there's a luxury builder called Toll Brothers. They build luxury homes that are you know four bedroom, four thousand square feet, and they sell the cheapest ones like one point eight million. They are now building luxury townhomes, luxury condos because there's not enough room to build houses anymore. So yes, they will go up in value. They go up in value at about the same rate as houses, anywhere from four to 6% per year. Um, sometimes you'll hit 12, 12%. I saw that a couple years ago. Um, what was it? 2018, the average was 12.63%. Last year, we took a little bit of a dip down about 8%. So California is always higher than the nation, right? In equity growth. And San Diego is always higher than California. So if you look at those values, add one to 2% to whatever the California growth was, and that's where you have most of San Diego. Yeah, it's, it's just a great place to be. I'm, I've got one question here off the books, um, which is uh, about having had a past short sale or if you've had a foreclosure or something like that, like, hey, what if we short sold a VA loan or we, maybe we foreclosed on a VA loan in the past? Um, there's a tremendous amount of forgiveness on this. Um, even if you foreclosed on a VA loan, you, there may be some hit to the entitlement, depending upon if there was a loss for a certain amount, but not, not the whole thing. So if you have partial entitlement, you can still buy up to 701, 500, um, potentially, you know, so there, there, there's a chance there might be a little something there, but remember the, the purpose of the VA home loan benefit is to help veterans buy homes in an affordable way. And they are, they're adamant about helping to do that. And the guidelines and the entire process that's built around it is designed to help do that. And my organization specifically, we underwrite to that guideline with the one overlay exception, which is the minimum 600 credit score. Outside of that, we follow those guidelines. So most of the time, there's two things that you'll notice. Most of the time, people who don't think they can get approved can. And people who um, maybe think they can only get approved for so much can get approved for more than that. So, you know, that's why a lot of times I'll ask you immediately up front, like, what is your budget? Because I want to make sure that we are working within what's something that works for you. 
Um, just because the VA will give you 600 grand um, doesn't mean you have to go spend that if you're comfortable with more like 450. But um, those are two things that happen very frequently that I think a lot of people don't realize. They think it's a hard loan to get because it sounds like, oh, well, it's from the government. Oh, it must be possible. We must have to submit a million pieces of paperwork. Oh, man, it must be some arduous process. Gosh, this has got to be extremely difficult. No, no, it's the opposite. Um, it's actually much, much easier to qualify than it is for other loans out there. And it's crazy that this loan is given to us and we don't have the requirements that the other loans have as well as we get a better interest rate. It's bananas. It's awesome. All right. Any other questions, guys? Fire them in the chat. We're here. We're live. We're hot for you right now. And we'll be doing that. Um, if you're interested in seeing the market stats and getting the breakdown, we'll be doing that Friday on Smarter San Diego. Do we decide three o'clock, Jay? Uh, no, it's got to be a little bit later than that because I have a, I have an award ceremony to be at um, on Friday for lunch. So let's do like four. Okay. So we'll say 4 p.m. Uh, we'll be on the Smarter San Diego page, breaking that stuff down. Uh, if you can't catch it, just check it out over the weekend. It'll be posted on the page there. We'll do it live, but um, you know, you can check it out afterwards mm -hmm. as well. It is just a simple breakdown of the numbers. This is what it is. These are numbers that have already happened. They're real. Um, you know, we're just going to show them, show you exactly what's there. Um, and help you understand what's happening in the marketplace. So if you want to come check that out, feel free to do that as well. All right, everybody, if there's no, no more questions, uh, we'll call it. Feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. We want to help. That's why we're doing this. So if you, if you have additional questions, if you'd like a one-on-one -on -one consultation or if you would like to have a phone call with one of us, um, just give us a shout and let us know. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all soon.